The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. It's the boy, Bobby the Maintenance Man, Shot Call in the VIP Band. Oh, yeah. We gotta get the coronavirus out of the country. We don't need it here. Oh, yeah. Where's that be disease started off the roof horn? Spread across the globe, they say it's airborne. From country to country, it's just over by storm. They lock down the city, shut down all the airports. So, chance and keep your lights on. Stay six feet away from people, but that gets idea when they tell you to stay indoors. But for them vinyl stores, no coronavirus. Quarantine, stay indoors, no coronavirus. Mm, gotta wear your mask and gloves, no coronavirus. Wash your hands, everything we touch, no coronavirus. Go away, my people, I'm hard enough. Now listen. My baby. Good yawning this morning and welcome back to... Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk. of July 2022, and you are on the clock with Erin Green. On the clock, we engage organizations, institutions, social and cultural leaders, and ordinary people to better understand the impact of public policy, private sector development, and emerging social and consumer trends. On the clock, we have conversations that help us understand and navigate a rapidly changing Bahamas. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, I'm going to need everybody to mark themselves safe from the floods. We had another, seemed like tropical storm, another mini hurricane passed through at the end of last week, and it was a doozy. I hope everyone is doing okay. There's lots in the news today. Uh, I had guests scheduled. We're going to have to reschedule. But I played that song for them. I promise you all I had this song. That song is called No Coronavirus by Bobby the Mechanic. I think the song was uh, produced by Shad Colley and the VIPs, possibly, or background group. Anyway, I love that song. I love it. I love it because it's cool, but I like it because... And ain't nobody would have thought Bobby the Mechanic was a musician. Ain't nobody would have thought that. But this boy bad. He's got that performing energy. Performer. And sometimes these performers, these gems, they be hidden in the bush, you know? Uh, they be sort of hidden under stress or obligations, responsibilities. Um, but you got somebody who you just never expected was a real Grammy Award winning, well, he didn't win any awards yet, but the potential. Bobby the Mechanic, no corona virus. Thank you for making that song, Bobby, and thank you for all the people who supported the making of that song. I got to find out where your album is. We need more music. We need more music for people, for Bahamian people. We need people to speak to their people. You understand your people, the language you're dealing They need you to express what they're feeling. If we wait, and continue to wait on the political class to hear us, to acknowledge that they've heard us, to act accordingly. We'll be waiting forever. It's up to us to organize and get our voices, get our ideas, get our desires out into the public voice. Push it into the public consciousness. People need to know how you're feeling. If you are part of this uh, fabric we call the Bahamas, the tapestry, and people need to know how you're feeling. They need to know what you need. They need to know how they need to you know, moderate themselves to accommodate you, and you the same. I think too often times we are waiting on the government to do things they may be obligated to do, but we know they do not have the capacity to do, and we don't need to constantly be in that space. So we got lots of news coming out of the Guardian and the Tribune this morning. Uh, Bahamas Unified Bus Drivers Union, I think, are uh, right now at R.M. Bailey Park. There's a protest, and I'm going to ask my producer when he gets ready to give me the signal, so maybe we could play that clip. There's a clip from Eyewitness News. 
that I hope to play. But there's lots of union unrest. Uh, there is concern at the that various sectors of the staff there are also going to protest. Just trying to find a, here we go, Guardian headline. LPIA braces for labor unrest. Union expected to heat up as issues are unresolved. The Bahamas Airport Authority is bracing for possible industrial action at LPIA. The authority is sure prepared to handle any disruptions and that it continues to negotiate with the airport airline and allied workers union in good faith to resolve outstanding issues. Meanwhile, Kinsley, first president of the BNA, Bahamas National Alliance Trade Union Congress, under which the AAWU falls, asserted that the union and authority have not had harmony for a long time. Ferguson said it's from the BAA. Now, this is a massive issue. This is of grave concern. First of all, I'm going to have to, I can try to reach out to some union reps I know so we could get a clear understanding of what's happening. Because after the PLP, while in opposition, signed a memorandum of understanding with uh, one of the leading Congresses, trade Congresses, we thought uh, everything was okay, everything was going to be fine and dandy. There would be no issues with unions, with labor, that all matters would be resolved. And look at the commitment that the then opposition would have made to the unions and the labor movement. But let me tell you why this is important. I mean, right under that story, we have a story, a Nassau cruise port and Disney Cruise Line plaque exchange was held on Saturday celebrating the inaugural voyage of Disney Wish. Now, I can be honest, I haven't gotten into this article yet. It is just a nice little snapshot. But the airport has to work. Look at all of the money you've invested in tourism to the detriment of your own citizens. Eh? The airport has to work. It cannot fail. It has to be running 24-7. In fact, that airport needs to be running 48-7. We could squeeze in those extra hours so that we, the Bahamian people, the ordinary people, could, could see, could feel the return on the investment that we continue to make into tourism. But that's not the reason that the airport cannot fail. The airport cannot fail because you are an archipelagic nation. And Nassau is only one island in the center of the archipelago. It is the capital for one reason, because its tendency to withstand storms. That's it. Ain't nothing, it ain't the beaches. That's it. And so you have a large proportion of your citizens in the capital, but all of the services are in the capital. And so they need to come to the capital regularly to do the things that they are required to do by law in many instances. Because you haven't figured out how to properly install those services in these family islands. And also because you have limited health care facilities in these islands for tourists and Bahamians alike. For tourists and Bahamians alike. And nobody could afford an emergency ambulance to come to Nassau, go to Florida. As soon as these gas pains hit, I won't know I could book a flight to Nassau. Because I figure by the time I get to Nassau, either my appendix will have exploded or I would have delivered the baby. Especially if I'm coming up on one of the mail boats. God bless family island determination. That's why this is important. And that's why we can't, can't continue to let politics leak its way into every single space in the town. Got a story here from last week, uh, and it's followed up in today's Guardian. The headline last week was bursting from the seams. 
More than 50 patients were yesterday at WMH after a massive influx of non-COVID-19 patients pushed the hospital into, quote, crisis mode, close quotes. Minister of Health, Dr. Darvel said, said, adding that patients will be transferred to Doctors Hospital West to help alleviate the burden. He's quoted as saying, yes, we have some patients who have COVID-19, but what we are seeing is a large number of individuals who are suffering from chronic non-communicable diseases presenting an accident and emergency. And he said, we have a crisis at PMH. So that was a couple of days ago. In today's paper, Darvel says the situation at PMH is manageable. I just want to know, how did you, how did we go from crisis mode to manageable so quickly? Or is it that we really need to interrogate what does manageable mean? And since you're telling us that, or you told us that this is due to a massive influx of non-COVID patients, what I want to know is what, uh, what plans, what has taken place to increase the capacity of the hospital since the last surge ended? Because this is, you can't blame this one like on a, you know, an act of God, like the insurance company like to look at you and say, oh, we can't, you know, a car ended up in your bathtub. That, but that's an act of God. No, you can't use that excuse because it's not COVID. It's something that you were already aware of and should have been prepared for. How you could afford to go to Doctors Hospital West? How, how, how? And you can't afford PPE. And to hear the FNM chairman, Sands, say that the country needs to find sustainable funding to address many of the long-standing challenges plaguing the public health care system. Can we start with your salary, sir? I know you are no longer a, you're not in the house, right? You're no longer a paid politician or a member of government functioning in the royal opposition. But could we take it from your salary? Could we take it from all of the salaries of the MPs and cabinet ministers since 1973? Can we make a law, can we pass a law that says that all MPs and cabinet ministers must receive medical care from PMH if they require it? No doctor's hospital, no private physician at home, no flying off to the States. If you are a MP or a cabinet minister, you must go to PMH. Because when Dr. Darvel says that the situation is manageable, I am wondering what's, what are the main to determine this? What does manageable mean? Have we calculated the number of people that we are willing to lose or that we can lose before the system becomes unmanageable? Is that, is that what's happening? How is it manageable? And how are you going to sustain that? What if we actually see a spike, a real spike in severe cases, severe responses to COVID? What are you going to do then? When it gets shut down again, and you guys can't, run from the House of Assembly to the airport for health care. There are too many people suffering. There are too many people dying in pain, in their own filth, in mold, in animal waste, for the politicians to be treating this subject so lightly. Pause there. Let me get to this text. Text just says, I paid PMH for delivery of my daughter 11 months after she was born. They called her mother for payment. I had to take the receipt of 1200 to prove they were paid. So do, do they go after the... Okay. Full stop. 
New sentence. So do they go after the Haitians who obviously are a burden to our healthcare system? They get paid for live birth. No wonder they come here pregnant. They get paid for live birth? So you got paid for live birth? I mean, your wife got paid for live, live birth too? We can talk about it for a second. See, what happens is that you have to determine what is the Haitian migrant, documented and undocumented, regular or irregular, contributing to the overall tax system where the funds are pulled from to service PMH. You pay in VAT, you pay in VAT on VAT, you pay in VAT on duty and shipping and VAT. And then you pay in VAT on feminine hygiene protection products. It makes no sense. But if you're paying these things, if you're purchasing things in the store, then that means that stamp tax was paid, duty was paid, VAT was paid, and you, the person buying it, are paying it. So tell me again how they are any greater a burden to the healthcare system. Now, if you tell me, well, yeah, we got to get a ton of Creole translators in, and, and that costs money, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'd be giving uh, students, well, with COVID, it's far more difficult now, but for non- uh, life-threatening injuries and services, I would figure out how to partner with the University of the Bahamas or uh, the Ministry of Education to provide opportunities for young people to practice interpreting skills, translating from English to Creole, Creole to English. But the truth is, is that if you hear you to taxation, and I think that's what happened because I think the politicians may sort of be thinking like you, because they, they contribute as well, but they feel like they're not getting sufficient return on their contribution. Another text, hi, Aaron, can you tell me if you are helping the queer theorists that argued with the PM during the open lecture? He had called your name on several occasions. Can I te tell you if I am helping the queer theorist? I'm not a part of any campaign. Like, that he asked at that event arose from a campaign. I am not a part of any campaign. In fact, I didn't get an invite to meet the policymakers. Nobody felt the need to tell me. I like to meet policymakers. I have jokes I'd like to share with them. I didn't get an invite to the state reception. He got an invite. I didn't get an invite. I know I'm not, I'm not not helping him. I don't know if he needs my help. If you're trying to ask me what's my position on what happened or what he said, we could get into that. If we got enough time, we could definitely get into that. But I don't know if I want to make that like the bulk of my show. There's plenty of things to talk about. Great show as usual, Ms. Green. I want to go Miami in August. Tell the pilots, please don't decide to strike when the plane is in the air. Next, I look out the window, I see a parachute. You anyway, that's not an appropriate joke. Bahamian pilots are going to do whatever it takes to keep you all safe. Okay? That's it. Signed, sealed, delivered. They're yours. That... Texas says, Miss Green, you think them politicians want to die? Eh? Say they must go PMH just because they say stupid things on TV. That don't mean they are completely stupid. You're absolutely right, Texter. You're absolutely right. I mean, the second part, the first part, we don't want to think, we don't want to think about anybody dying. That's why we're having this conversation. You guys fix it. Just fix it. Fix it. Producer, let's go to this caller. Good morning, caller. You're on the clock. Caller, there is this dark in the voice of with you. Pretty eyes here in green. Good morning, Brayman. How you doing? Boy, I'm ready. We're still waiting for justice, law and order in this country this country, the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. But I want to make three quick points. Mm -hmm. One, what you would call, um, uh, oh, Lord, got away from me. Uh, but what we need, right? Mm -hmm. We would need, I, I wish you would get uh, the commissioner of police on uh -huh. so we could find out why Central are not working the way they should be working for the Bahamian people. Secondly, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Economists, we need a good economist so we can have a future gaze, okay? Okay. The things that an economist is supposed to be doing it over the 
airway for the in, in the public, right, in the public discourse. I That's got you. Right. My last point is, right, mm -hmm. uh, the telephones, telecoms or PTC, <laughs> yes. man, they got to do better than this. There's some people waiting for an information call. Mm. Hour or more. <laughs> Try 30 days. Time. Try 30 I days. Brayman, you cannot be on this radio rowing about BTC. Well, I pay my bill. I don't owe BTC a dime. Every month, I pay my bill. Listen, if it ain't 30 days you've been complaining, then you ain't been complaining at all. But I got something right here for you, Brayman. Thank you very much. I, I want to talk about BTC this, Thank you. this morning, definitely. Uh, to your first point, let's give it three more days. Fernando warns officers must show public respect. Police Commissioner Clayton Fernandez encouraged officers to, quote, be careful, close quotes, how they communicate with the public, warning that he will not stand for disrespect. While he stressed that respect is a, quote, two-way street, close quote, the commissioner said it is his intention to facilitate, quote, in-house training, close quote, to ensure officers can relate to members of the public in the correct way. Yes. So, Brayman, I know you're listening. You know, I was pleased to see that story. It suggests that the powers that be are aware of the concerns of the Bahamian people. And the Bahamian people have been saying over and over again, why you treat me like a criminal? Why are you so disrespectful, even though the mantra is, or the motto, uh, not even the motto, it's like a convention, ignorance of the law is no excuse, officers should not act as if every person they interact with is on the top 10 wanted list. There are instances where people, and you, you're hearing it from my mouth, there are instances where people are doing the absolute foolishness, but they are completely unaware of why it is absolute foolishness. For instance, it's easy to go down a one-way street in New Providence due to a lack of signage. Now, mind you, when you're on East Bay Street approaching the entrance to Potter's Key Dock, you have to be careful because... Many vehicles will come the wrong way out of that pink plaza by the pond, down the one-way street the wrong way, understanding that it's a one-way and they're heading in the wrong direction, to cross over three lanes of traffic to enter Potter's Key Dock. Those people are not the people that I'm talking about. Now, that doesn't mean you should be heavy-handed with anybody, but we understand why you run hot and you suck your teeth after watching people commit infraction after infraction after infraction, risking other people's lives. But still, you cannot get frustrated and take that frustration out on that particular offender or on the general public. So I think they're working on it. Bremen, I think they're working on it. Uh, there was something else I wanted to respond to, but I got two callers on the line. Good morning, caller. You're on the clock. Yes, good morning, Ms. Green. Good morning. How you do? Yeah, on, uh, <clears throat> but I, I would like to make some selfish statements that I think are of concern to the people. And mm -hmm. Firstly, uh, the airport, right? We, 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 we in this country, see, I, I'm, I'm a pessimist of strength. You have negative and positive. They can't exist without the other. Mm -hmm. The thing positive is good, but you have to realize that it, it, it has to be balanced. With, re with, re with reality, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, as far as the airport, right? Mm -hmm. it, 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 is, it will fail and it is failing because they don't have any non-travel commercial activity. When you go in Miami Airport and the States and other airports, you see a busy restaurant hub and you see other peripheral businesses that enhances the airport. It's supposed to be a commercial hub within that area and within itself. And so, too, we have limited ourselves and, you know, it's a binary zero to one and one to zero algorithms are failing in this country and people are celebrating why the line is sinking in a sea of calamity. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm saying. According to partisanship, this is not going to work. They have excluded us from everything and now they see, hey, hey Aaron, there are so many follies being made daily. But anyhow, Aaron, I want to touch on the hospital and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping yeah. that any young female who has been through these experience, I'm looking for them because I know a few and they don't even want to talk about it. She has lost a child and they said You mean the, the maternity ward? Yes, and then they said that if you sue them, you cannot come back there. But they thought the oh, public... Oh, pause, 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 pause. What? 
Just yeah, repeat this, it for the people so they can hear you. This is, she lost the child. But yeah. what I'm saying is she has a lawsuit. But what I'm saying is they're saying, this is being told by a couple of people, if they sue the hospital, they cannot come back there for any services, which I thought was a public hospital. This is the paradigm that I'm hearing. These yeah. are the things that upset me. Uh, my fiance's uh, uh, sister, I'm trying to get her to come on and tell the people herself. Mm -hmm. She was told two months ago or two months in a week or whatever, it doesn't matter, that there was no food and no water, and she had to call her fiance. Then there's a lady who was uh, in, in, in labor, and, and the nurse tell her, oh, you're in nine centimeters or whatever it's supposed to be. I'm not a woman. So what I'm saying yeah. is, and she went to use the restroom, and then the baby came out. This is on Facebook. This is what I was told. Yeah. And so they're looking for people to voice these things. But here, here's, here's what I'm concerned about. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the conditions at the hospital, right? These people call themselves the minister of this and the minister of that, right? Mm -hmm. There has to be some urgency to fix the, the mess and what's going on in the hospital. They have to humanize the staff, where it means, where it means to increase the salary, sit down and all of that. Just like how Fernando made a statement to the shop looking for a gentleman who, is beyond, who lived down the corner who helped me to lift some furniture. That I didn't know who, he didn't did anything, but they, apparently he they, he was a suspect in something. But he was totally innocent. They came uh, with big guns drawn, yuck up my scissors, running on with me, slam my door, break my door frame for nothing. So this is this is the type of androids, robotic, mindless people they have in these cars. All right. So I don't know about how he's going to do that without cameras. These things, what he talking about, could easily be done. You know. Right. And then uh, the, the thing is, the thing is, uh, 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 Aaron, mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm very upset about the, 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 these people still pushing these are. Uh, Health officials, uh, uh, all right, and also in the pregnancy ward, maternity ward, they're, 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 they're telling the people not to take pictures and, 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 and trying to, like, they're running the dictatorship. And so e e even as far as the, the COVID vaccine, which I'm tired of talking about, uh, I, I, I've been ridiculed for speaking the truth. Most people can't see data is coming in from other countries. It really, Richard, shows that people who are immune suppressed should not have been vaccinated in the first place because they're seeing the death rates and the adverse events in people with rheumatoid uh, uh, diseases, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, and I heard this from a rheumatologist, and, and I've been reading it for a while. And also, they, they, they know that these vaccines are not working. And I want to know, where is the data on the booster efficacy? They're just boosting people. The question for the sheep and the mindless, bookless, whoever. I, I, how, how much vaccines can you take? Bless up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, boy, look here, pictures in PMH is a balance there because we want to protect the sort of privacy and the sanctity, you know, the privacy of the people who are in there. Uh, but at the same time, a friend sent me some videos from PMH, and uh, i still angry. i still angry about it. Anyway, that music means we got to go to a break. So if you're on the phone line, please hold the line. I will definitely get back to you. We, when we get back, we got to talk about how partisan politics is in consuming everything. Where can we find data about booster efficacy? Are the police officers wearing body cams or what? Why do we pay for them? What are we doing with them? Are we guarding even garden mango and ganep tree with them? And then when we come back, BTC, Marcos, alert, traffic, PM indicates no final decision on recreational marijuana use. And back to the phone and text lines. Stay tuned. You're on the clock with Aaron Green, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. I used to think of the bank as my personal ATM machine. If I wanted a new car, new furniture, a weekend trip to Miami, no problem. Just max out the credit card or top up my loan. I was a big baller until I realized that 75% of my salary was going to pay back all those loans. Fidelity's personal financial coaching was the best solution. Fidelity gave me a plan with a debt consolidation loan that has a built-in savings that pays 5% interest. I now only have one low monthly payment, plus money in my pocket. Give Fidelity Bank a call at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport. Visit any of Fidelity's locations or visit a website at fidelitygroup.com. Fidelity. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Parents, it's that sweet time of year again. Oh, what are you talking about? Christmas yet? The kids are going back to school. So pick up your copy of the Nassau Guardian's Back to School Supplement, because it's the most wonderful time of the year. 
your students in the latest styles at the lowest prices because summer break is almost over and our back to school supplement is filled with brand name hunted prices, store locations, hours, and contact details. It's the happiest season of all. Advertisers. Call the Nassau Guardian today at 302-2300 or call your account executive to get in on the two-for-one insertion deal. If it's uniforms, shoes, books, backpacks, calculators, art supplies, laptops, tablets, or whatever is on your back-to-school supply list, your ad should be in the Nassau Guardian's back-to-school supply. It's the most wonderful time of the year. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Nassau, Bahamas. Oh, yeah. Where can be disease started off the new horn? Spread across the globe, they say it's their horn. From country to country, it's the storm by storm. They lock down the city, shut down all the airports. So wear your mask and gloves, wash your hands and keep your lights on. Stay six feet away from people, protect yourself at all costs. Listen to the media when they tell you. Good morning. Welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. You are on the clock. Let's go to the caller quickly, producer. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Aaron Gray. Good morning. How you do? I'm fine. You know, Bremer is on to something. Mm -hmm. Go on. About, the government is talking about digital currency, right? Mm -hmm. To operate a digital currency, you need adequate telecommunication mm -hmm. and adequate light. Mm -hmm. yeah, because that's been very important. It's going to invest in it. I was on um, on Friday, and my telecommunication went down. And they had the audacity to make a, a public announcement like the old managers used to do. Mm -hmm. And they say, um, we apologize, we're presently having technical problems. Please bear with us. Stick a pin right there. Uh -huh. I'm wondering if they need to make an announcement that they are having recurring signal issues with, its, with their broadband internet service across the island. I'm wondering but, if they need to do that. But I never had a broadband issue. I must be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. I just have an issue that day on Friday when the, my everything going down, including my um, including my um, cell phone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when normally a major problem like that, Leon Williams used to put out an announcement, you know, and that yeah. was, that, but they're not doing that anymore. In fact, it turns out I've got people, I'm, I'm reading on social media that uh, nobody is answering the 2255282 helpline. No, nobody helpline. No, I just want to get to that. That's yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't take it like, nobody answer. If you only could get an answer, they could say, go back in on the Leon Williams, them, just get an answer. Well, listen, nobody answer, everybody's sleeping or going to wake. So and they, go got on, a, go on home. they got a third party company managing the WhatsApp service for that number, right? It says right on the top, right on the top of the page, it says managed by a like third party company, right? Uh. It's not BTC. If you pay in a whole company to manage your WhatsApp helpline, right? Why right. can't it be 24 7? Why, why, why it have to be like a nine to five job, like nine it, to eight? Exactly. Also, they have an online, it's a waste thing. They don't answer back to you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> They answer you every two weeks. Nobody respond. Well, I say nobody. It took four days for somebody to respond with more than another prompt, like without restarting the process. It took more than four days. I know people who've been waiting for 30 days. Yeah. The online platform, the online uh, website is malfunctioning. Their bill is not itemized. They just give you a number you have to pay. They don't tell you... If it's for, you know, what, what, what part of it is for telephone, what part for internet, what part is left over from last month, what yeah, part is this bill. month? It's not a doctor's bill. Say that again? It's not like a doctor's bill. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> right? You know, and, like, I, like I said, yeah. if, if the government's got to talk about digital currency, you need an adequate telecommunication and adequate light to stay on. But listen, if the government wants to talk about digital currency, or hosting what is supposed to be or is soon to be yes, the world's yes. largest cryptocurrency yes. firm. What you mean? Adequate? It's supposed to be the best in the re available in the region. And then yes. on top of that, 
Here's how I know they're not serious. But I mean, they're not serious, no, about, they're not serious. about our our active participation uh -huh. in this space. Has anybody talked to you about net neutrality yet? Has no. anybody said what they intend to do to ensure that everyone has equal access to the internet, same speeds, you have right the same speeds, the same scope of of uh, or, sites? Or get, or get, or get paid for your data. Like out of prime is trying to get um, climate change money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, what about data money? Yeah, and so all of these things, yeah. somebody should be talking about them. Somebody should be talking about them consistently and loudly as much as we like to talk about hospital bread, right? It should be everywhere. Today, today talking to the right people, like I said, to those right people this morning, and myself and yourself, they should be talking to us. Yeah, well. Who are they talking to? Well, they're talking, fortunately, Morning Blend had on some uh, uh, people who were having a conversation, but every day there should be some space on some platform yeah. that's hosting this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, 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 uh, how I have, like uh, I have a group of conversation every day on Facebook. That should, that, they should be like that. Yeah. They do it during election time, though. <laughs> yeah. During election time, they had all kind of conference online, all kind of education. Like election, you know, it'd be yeah. more educated. But yeah. after they get it, everybody goes dumb. It finished, yeah, it finished. They don't yeah. know nothing. They, they... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want, all I would need to know, I want to keep my light on so I can make my own money. I want to keep my telecommunication on. Mm -hmm. And don't be, it's a waste of time calling Erica. That's another thing you need to be around. We need to talk about that. If I just twitch when you I, said I that. I can play the so many times, but BTC, nothing happened. Yeah, I don't it's know. It's basically our taxpayer's money. Yeah, we need to add a, we need to include with legislation provisions to cause IRCA to focus on... Well, they had a legislation, we need, we need to upgrade it, amend it. Right, con no, specific legislation for yeah. consumer protections. Right now, it appears as if the bulk of IRCA's work is managing the relationships and potential conflict service providers yeah, 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 and yeah, not yeah. between so service so providers and consumers. Right. Like I tell you, the boy tell me, miss, how I supposed to ensure that this line I'm hanging across the road is hung at the proper legal height because your house is on a slope. Yeah. Urka's supposed to do something about that. I can't just eat that foolishness foolish. by myself. That's foolishness. Anyway, listen, I got to go. Yeah, all right. Thank all you right. so much. Thank you so much, caller. Okay, this weekend... We had a Marco alert. Now, I'm going to call it a Marco alert, not because it said Marco alert. It didn't say Marco alert at all. In fact, it said Amber alert. But I'm going to call it a Marco alert because it was issued in the Bahamas, although a friend of mine that has a U.S. number got the alert on her phone. Uh, it is a Marco's alert because... Is a Bahamian, a young Bahamian, 17-year-old girl. I think Devon, anyway, we're not going to call the name. I think maybe Clark is her last name. But So there was a Marco alert this weekend. First things first, you obviously must be in the beta testing or, you know, maybe the data testing. Who knows? We all are obviously in the testing mode. Alert. And I'm going to suggest, like, you know, when you copy and paste, like when you're borrowing answers from your classmate to your left, don't also copy and paste their name. Right? Put in your own name on the exam. It's in testing phase. But here's some things people notice. Some people with the live phones got it. Some people with BTC phones got it. And I'm asking the question, is it a matter of people with Android phones got it and people with iPhones didn't get it, right? Like, that's the real determinant. Also, it gave me a prompt that said that I could unsubscribe. Why? Is not the alert supposed to be broadcast across all phones? Why are you giving people the option to unsubscribe from the broadcast? Because everybody will then unsubscribe from the broadcast, and that's not making any sense. But we assume that you are still in the testing phase. What would be great is if you gave us a report on what you learned in this testing phase and also a timeline for complete or full operation of the service. 
Text just says, we have a Consumer Protection Commission and board. Yes, we do. Do they have any? We have an IRCA? Whose job is to regulate these things? Are any of them really focused on the consumer, protecting the consumer? Let me tell you how I know that they are having difficulties, and I'd be kind, doing the things that they know they ought to be doing, but may be frustrated by politics. Why are we paying VAT on a tax? Why are we paying a tax on tax? Why are you taxing a tax? Why are you taxing a tax multiple times? Who is protecting the consumer? Why don't banks have bathrooms accessible to the public, considering the everybody that serves customers inside their brick and mortar require bathrooms to service those people? Sure, we have a Consumer Protection Commission and board, but do they have the capacity to enforce any of the things that they're responsible for? Oh, boy. <laughs> you all hear that music, right? That means I got to go to a break before the end of the show. You guys, hold on. Stay tuned. We got some more issues to go through. PM indication on recreational marijuana use. Stay tuned. Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. <laughs> When faced with an illness like cancer, we band together. And we at Cleveland Clinic in Florida have your back. From advanced cancer treatments to extra safety measures at all of our locations, we're with you on this journey. For every infusion and follow-up, for every step of the way, for every care in the world. Cleveland Clinic in Florida. Get the care you need when and where you need it. To learn more or connect with a local representative slash Caribbean. Hello? Can you show you something else, boy? Who this is? Tamika? You don't even remember my name? Wow, Dred. Girl, I've been so busy. You still planning your trip? Girl, and I can't wait. I right here online booking my car. You dare plan and trip. You vaccinated? Girl, we had to. We ain't been nowhere since this pandemic started. 14-day vacation. Best vacation ever. <laughs> girl, are you bro? Well, I know you's gonna get the vaccine, because you too like travel. When y'all get your vaccine? Girl, long time. Because you got to get your first dose, wait, then get your second dose at least two weeks before you travel. Johnny get his vaccine and he 12. Even Grammy get hers. <laughs> Child and Grammy say she ain't get no money. But I say I'm not under the mattress. Child, let me send my list because I know you're going in shopping. He should don't play with me. Vaccinate today, live tomorrow. A message by Paho WHO, Canada and USAID. This radio, 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Stay six feet away from people, protect yourself at all costs. Listen to the media when they tell you to stay indoors. With you, behind your people and buying our stores. No coronavirus. Quarantine, stay indoors. No coronavirus. Gotta wear your mask and gloves. Good morning. Welcome back to Guardian Radio. You're on the clock with Erin. Green. Got a text here that says, I pay for my network service, Erin. If I don't want it in my phone, I should have the option. This is a democratic nation, is it not? If it is, we should act like it. We should act like it's a democratic nation. We do not act like it's a democratic nation. We don't. And it's okay. You don't, you don't want to be a low alert network. That's fine. It's okay. That is all right. I don't understand why you wouldn't, but that's cool. And then should we not send you the NEMA alerts? Should we not tell you when the hurricane is coming? Now the text, shopping online, I have seen many products that says not for sale in the U.S. What consumer protection? Okay, maybe I got to get somebody in from uh, the Ministry of Finance or the Department of Inland Revenue to explain what items that are labeled for export only, what that label for export only Means, means that the company got a tax consideration that requires these products to be 
export it, but I don't think that's what we are talking about. Well, I mean, that's what I'm talking about, right? We can talk about food and the importation of food, right? And I don't know if we have the capacity to assess the quality, right, of the, the food coming in, but like chemical, but what we do need is a regime to ensure that food that's being imported is imported in good condition, right? Not too close to it, its expiry date. That in the transportation ship and shipping process that uh, it had the proper quality control. We also need consumer protection on things like old products, things that are susceptible to dry rot. People complain tons of buying shoes, high-end shoes, and they fall apart in 30 seconds of wearing them. Uh, good morning, caller. You're on the clock. Good morning, Mrs. Green. This good. is Cialan Johnson. Good morning. How are you doing? Yeah. You know, we often spend so much time, I see, from a technological standpoint, trying to reinvent the wheel. Like just what you just spoke about, about some of the photosanitary uh, standards or standards uh -huh. for food and services. We just have to simply adopt the position that we'll accept only any food, food thing that meets the FDA or uh, requirements, etc. Mm -hmm. At minimum, we'll be meeting their minimum standard, mm -hmm. and uh, we can then uh, just know that you know if if it don't meet their standard we won't accept it and that will also force them not to send us stuff that doesn't meet their standard also uh and just simple things i know we've been trying to get the photo salary standard long island what's his name is uh the long island guy in 2002 mm -hmm. uh oh boy, what is cartwright it? cartwright yeah, yeah. since he was there we've been trying to develop this photo sanitary, sanitary standard when we first start talking about the extension of the WTO and the, the, the Caribbean single market, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, we haven't gotten it right. Mm -hmm. But on the fact that you talked about the need for education and, and uh, elucidation and whatever else, uh, uh, there is, I don't know if you saw the contributions by one Eden Mary Gator in regards to the various different economic models. I'll send them to you anyway. Yeah. But it's my understanding that she is beginning a process uh, in the next week that breaks down in the simplest term, simple words like blockchain, carbon mm -hmm. credits, uh, fungible, non-fungible, uh, tokens, uh, etc. tokenization, mm -hmm. all these various different terms beginning next week on, on our various different social media page, which can be accessed through EdenMaryGator.com. All right. You Thank know, you. So just, just for information, it's, it's free and it's available, but it gives people a better understanding because we're talking with these broad terms. We're not saying how, when, where, none of those different things. And I can tell you right now, mm -hmm. what I see from the carbon credit and what I see for the, the, the digital assets bill, yeah. there is no inclusion for behemoths in it. Don't mind the talk besides the JOBS, just over broke suckers and the just over broke system, about ownership and participation in these. Because, and if there is, I challenge them right now to present the paper, present the policy paper, present whatever paper you have, present the, 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 the strategy for the ecosystem, publish it today. They, you know, call Clint Watson or Latre Ramming or whoever it is, mm -hmm. tell them to present it to you. Without it existing, it's definitely not for us. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, C. Allen. And we shift right over to that headline. PM indicates no final decision on recreational marijuana use. And he says, in, it, in its, well, the article says, in its our blueprint for change, developing a cannabis industry and, quote, encouraging joint ventures in the medical cannabis industry. The party also committed to ensuring that all behaviors are given, quote, full access to development and have a fair opportunity to become owners in this new industry. The government has engaged Canadian corporate law firm Castles to assist with the development of a regulatory framework for a cannabis industry. PM Brave Davis said that the government is considering whether to go as far as legalizing the recreational use of marijuana. Well, first of all, let us see the white paper. Let us see it. We can get into that article at another time when we have more time. I got a text here, a response to the person who said they pay for their network service. And it says, no, not that I don't want to be a part of them, but I should always have that option to not be a part of them. Even with NEMA alerts, and those are on two totally different scales of priority, by the way, 
Also, we have a good testing lab for food shopping out, but no lab for what's coming in. So we just have to trust the suppliers, right? So we now need to make sure that we have the same capacity in the imp checking imports lab as we do in the checking and assessing exports lab. Dear texter, thank you for texting back, but we got to talk about that as well. How are these two on different scales? Protecting a young pe person and being prepared for a hurricane. Texter says, uh, Aaron, I wouldn't want to be a part of that Amber Alert either because it's clear these young girls like sleeping out. Some girls rather have an ounce of, an ounce of autonomy over their own sexuality. They rather choose who they sleep with than be forced to sleep with somebody in their family or someone their parent is prostituting them to. I feel you, though. Sometimes it appears as if they like sleeping out. Great show as usual. No, I can't tell, say that. I can't say that. Now, the text there says, uh, it's not only foods, but products containing hazardous chemicals, et cetera, and, et cetera, and don't meet the U.S. or British standards. That's another thing. We all focus on the U.S. standards. Go to Britain and determine how many things produced in the U.S. cannot be sold in Europe or require a special license to sell them. Ah, oh boy. I didn't even get to, ch to talk about the person who parked their mini SUV on the sidewalk by Dunkin' Donuts in town, blocking the whole pedestrian crossing. How could one tiny shop want to take up so much road? Anyway, maybe the shop needs to talk to its customers about their behavior. Anyway, you guys have a great day. It didn't start as I expected it, but it turned out like I hoped. Thank you for calling. Thank you for texting. Thank you for joining the conversation. See you tomorrow. And Guardian Radio AM is up next with Cecil Newry. So stay tuned and have a great day. Shut down all the airports. So wear your mask and gloves. Wash your hands and keep your lights on. Stay six feet away from people. Protect yourself at all costs. Listen to the media when they tell you to stay 